not us waiting 20 years to get this film and it's not good. 20 years in development and turnaround and this is what we get. It's a disappointment. Now let me cut straight to the chase. This film is not good. This is a rated R horror film, an adaptation of Braun Stoker's Dracula, just a, an arc of that, and it's not good. On paper, I think it's a good concept. Conceptually, it's good. I don't think the problem is with the script so much. I think they ran out of story and tried to stretch it enough and uh, economize it enough to make it long for the sake of being long because it's just a, a chapter of Bram Stoker's Dracula, an arc really. So that was there. But direction wise, I think that's where the film fails for me because a lot of this film a lot of at least the not set pieces but a lot of the action sequences were redundant some of the the horror elements are repeated over and over again so there was that i think what would have saved this for me shorten it develop the characters change the score the score belongs to some other movie the score was bad this is a period piece. I think music from that time period would have been more effective. I'll get into that later. And the protagonist isn't strong enough or developed well enough to even root for him. And he gets really preachy in points. And this is a mess. I don't like crapping on movies. It takes hundreds of hardworking people to pull movies together. And this one specifically has been in pre-development for many, many years. Pre-development, turn around the whole bit. Okay. We deserve more though, we the audience, because this was an execution, an awful attempt at a movie or a story in the public domain that millions of people cherish. Because this is a contained thriller on a ghost ship in the 1800s, the late 1800s, I think the issue with the direction, just for me, for me, for my taste, I think because it's a contained thriller, it's not easy. There are not too many places you can go. And so I think that's why they ran out of ideas direction wise they ran out of story i think and so it became very redundant with uh the horror elements of it and when you run out of ideas or for me because i bore really easily i lost interest i lost interest because there's really no one to root for corey hawkins is the star of this film and is centered around his character, and I'll get into what I didn't like about that performance, but we, for this to be a rated R horror film, there weren't any jump scares. They weren't serious jump scares. Nothing was horrifying in the film. Well, there were horrifying elements, but it wasn't scary. And it just, and then on top of that, like the development, so the development of the characters wasn't strong enough to care about any of them, even the kid. And then because the livestock and the dog, spoiler alert, because the livestock and the dog were killed early in the film, that ruined it for me. So, there was not anywhere else to go after that. The basic concept of the film is this group of longshoremen are carrying dangerous cargo. They have to make it to London in torrential weather, in the, uh, you know, in the sea on this really old ship that needs to be retired. 
And to their surprise, Dracula is on board. On paper, this should have worked. I was thinking based on the trailer that this was going to be the Titanic, but scary. That's something I would have been interested in. And it starts off there, you can see that, although the, I, I think the writers took some of those ideas and incorporated it into this film, but it just didn't work because the story was really weak. Now, let me get into Corey Hawkins. I like him as an actor. He's a fellow DC native. I'm rooting for him. I think he's good in, you know, a lot of things. But this one, I think his character was underdeveloped. The dialogue written for him as this black Cambridge graduate doctor who's uh, on, should be higher on the caste system at this time, is struggling to find his place in the world as an elite black man the lines that they wrote for him are so weak and it, it's written like that someone these writers are unfamiliar with it's like a, 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 a sketch of what they think this character would say and I don't think it resonates comparatively Kelvin Harrison Jr.'s role in Chevalier, where he portrays a similar elite in the circles, I think it was more effective because it wasn't like clobbering someone over the head with it. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. It wasn't forced when he delivered this similar character. Another thing is that I liked Werewolf by Night. And I think Werewolf by Night is what this film, the, the effectiveness of Werewolf by Night is what this film was trying to pull off but failed. There are some beautiful shots captured in The Last Voyage of the Demeter. There are some, there are many that are not. The shots on the water look really beautiful because a lot of them are in black and white. The color shots just didn't look good. And the CGI is very weak in this film. It There was a section in the film in the middle, I believe it was, where it looked like someone was off camera throwing water on into the scene. That's how bad it looked. I wanted to stay up just to give this film a chance, but it, it was a struggle staying awake, especially since I saw it at night, but because it's so redundant, it's so weak, it's not a good film. Conceptually, it should have been because it's such a great idea. The arc of it all was a good idea. You are on this ghost ship and a doctor, and there is a woman on board who may be rabbit, may have been bitten by Dracula, and you're infusing her with your own blood and uh, trying to make it to your destination, but you may not make it because of the weather conditions and because you have Dracula on board who is, you know, taking everyone out. I think conceptually that was a great story, but it wasn't captivating enough the way that the, it wasn't captivating enough because of the direction of it. I think they lose momentum early on. I was into it in the beginning, but it got weaker and weaker and I kept losing interest. I really don't think this is a good film but they have to take time to develop the characters so that we can care. I didn't care about anyone on board because they were not interested. The dialogue was too weak. They were underdeveloped and it just it, it was just weak overall. And finally, the score. The score belonged to a totally different movie. The score is so bad in that time period with the music, I think it should have, they should have 
kept the music from that time with really high organs and horns and string instruments. I think it would have worked better for the film. I also think that they should have made the film black and white. Now, I know a lot of people do not like black and white films. I feel, again, I think what they did with Werewolf by Night was effective. I liked Werewolf by Night. It was short, sweet, it was funny, it was scary. I liked it. And I think this should have been a lot more like that than whatever this is. This spun out of control based on the direction of what they had. They had something really special and I think they blew it. It's just not good. I like that a black lead is leading a, this scary, this horror film, but it's just, honestly, it's just not good. I know it's difficult to hold interest, to captivate audiences and hold their interest when you have a period piece in the public domain that is a contained thriller. And to top it off, you have a preachy protagonist that is not well written or developed. You have all that working against this film and since it was developed for so long, you would think that all of that is worked out to bring magic to the story. And it doesn't. It fails miserably for me. That's me. This is one of my worst films of the year, unfortunately. I wanted to see it because, again, I was thinking, Titanic? Horror film? That's up my alley. This, it's not good. At any rate, see it at your own risk. The Last Voyage of the Demeter is in theaters now.